ఫోన్ తీసుకోవచ్చింది ఓకే అండి సో ఆడియో అండ్ వీడియో ఆర్ క్లియర్ మై డియర్ యూట్యూబ్ స్టూడెంట్స్ లెట్ మీ నో యా సో blue duke it was adopted as the state butterfly of sikkim so sikkim chief minister prem singh samang on the occasion of world environment day so here we have to remember world environment day is celebrated on 5th june 2022 of course uh, daily we will have one sort of day so if you remember all these days on one fine day you will forget your birthday that is a problem with the competitive examinations daily you will have one or other day girl day child day women day old women day young women day okay yeah declared blue duke the state butterfly the blue duke represents sikkim with its two unique colors blue blue representing the sky blue representing the sky and the white and white depicting the snow clad mountains of the himalayas so of course what sort of question they will ask only god knows try to remember this also as it is unique of the 720 species of butterflies found in sikkim blue duke was selected as a state butterfly securing 57% votes in a recent online poll conducted by the forest department so nowadays daily will get one poll with regard to program or uh, some or other thing so in the same way the forest department of uh, sikkim also involved in the same thing next to blue duke krishna peacock got maximum votes to be declared as the state butterfly of sikkim blue duke which goes by the scientific name basarona durga so for telugu people it is very of course not only for telugu people everybody know about the durga so if you remember durga of course nowadays they will also change in the examination this one so better basarona durga is unique to sikkim and the eastern himalayas it was discovered in the state in 1858 that is after first war of independence blue duck is found at an altitude below 1500 meters in the himalayas Blue Duke falls in Schedule 2 of the Wildlife Protection Act 1972 and is protected species in the Himalaya. So you should not cause harm to that. You have to protect that because it is a, almost a, like an endangered species. So this is with regard to the Blue Duke which was appointed as the state butterfly of the Sikkim. Now, <clears throat> in recent days, we got the report with regard to the environment performance index 2022 and uh, out of 180 countries and the position of india was 180 it is too bad it is too bad because indian government time and again is taking steps to conserve the environment there is no doubt in it you know we have replaced the fossil fuels by the non uh, non harm uh, fuels see now we are increasing our share in the solar power and even the number of electric vehicles flying on the roads has increased enormously within short period the sales are up, i mean very high you know you can see on the roads how many electric vehicles are flying especially two wheelers and followed by the four wheelers every popular brand car has released their electric version of vehicles into the market you can see on the roads but in spite of that our we are the we are having bad index we are last and pakistan bangladesh is having better rank than india in my personal opinion because even i am also the citizen of india i am i, I, I mean i am also having the right to freedom of expression i say that they have did something wrong in my opinion because we took all steps we took all steps to conserve the environment even 
there is clear evidence that in many states the forest cover has increased and even supreme court uh, in their judgments stopped many projects which will cause harm to the environment even indian government took every steps to conserve the biodiversity in the coastal regions by uh, marking the i mean flood zones etc etc so sometimes this kind of things may happen they may uh, i mean they may uh, um, i mean just, uh, so they may be unable to assess the reality what is happening sometimes it may happen so we are lost so very easy to remember as far as this performance index is concerned out of 180 countries our rank is 180 and which country stood in the first place that is very important shivani garu which country stood in first place anybody from online side which country stood first place in the environment performance index yeah this is how our aspirants are studying so they want to remain as aspirants for a long period okay if i am not wrong it is the denmark okay yes okay now in the biennial environment performance index what is the meaning of biennial for every two years 2022 and international ranking system that measures environmental health and sustainability of country see we are striving a lot even we have replaced the chemical fertilizers by the organic uh, fertilizers even bio fertilizers chemical insecticides chemical pesticides were replaced by the bio insecticides and bio pesticide because i know i am a farmer earlier we used to use the uh, chemicals like melat malathion endosulfan phenmalarate to kill the pests for our i mean red gram crops now we are using a bio pesticide called as tracer not today or uh, yesterday since uh, 25 years we are using the tracer which is a bio pesticide take the example of india it is blending ethanol with the diesel to minimize the harmful emissions from the vehicles so we are taking every step but still i think definitely there is something wrong in assessing the reality okay yes because uh, we are behind pakistan and bangladesh environmental health and sustainability and of countries india came at bottom 180th out of 180 countries last rank no tension with a paltry score of 18.9 india's 180th ranking comes after pakistan bangladesh vietnam and myanmar the bottom five together make up the poorest performing countries for environmental health in 2020 india was ranked at 168 with a score of 27.6 denmark was the top performer in the 2022 index just now i told you denmark but many people are saying norway or sweden because you know that scandinavian countries will uh, held first rank in many indices okay just yes. try to remember denmark and whenever you are writing the mains if you encounter of course nowadays uh, question from snt and environment is must must and even in ma vertical science also in the in a paper Uh, called as european union in that they have given the i mean about the environment and the i mean development environment versus development that was the question yeah so denmark was a top performer in the 2022 index so you you people should make a short notes and within 24 hours you have to see it once and, and weekly once monthly once that's all it, it, it will be over and you people will never see that never theek hai who publishes the index that is also very important who publishes the index 
the epi a biennial index is brought out by the world economic forum in collaboration with the yale center for environmental law and policy and the columbia university center for international earth science information network you have to write this you have to go on repeating that india's response to the index yes myself saying that they have not assess the ground reality and they have simply gave that rank we took every measures the share of solar power in india is increasing like anything so even we have switched over to bs6 to minimize the harmful vehicular emission bs6 and we are parties for all international convention to save the environment and ecology okay sometimes this kind of things may happen even take the example of india we are not having the actual figures of poverty and even in my opinion even census also there may be doubling or some people might have been left over who knows a person who died so, so, so might have been in the census who person who is alive his name may not be in the census because vast country and diversity and even some people will not reveal the reality okay yes india's response to the index so personally i am saying that this index is not up to the mark the ministry of environment forest and climate change rebooted the environmental performance index 2022 saying that your procedure is wrong saying it has many indicators based on unfounded assumptions some of these indicators used for assessing performance are extrapolated and based on services and unscientific methods so actually they could not assess the ground reality definitely there is no doubt in it india is striving to minimize the uh, impact to the ecology there is no doubt in it but still the rank is back uh, bad something uh, sometimes it happens not all the times now why Posid posidonia australis is in news because it is the world's largest plant world's largest plant just to make single note world's largest plant the plant name and the place where it was found as far as our state service exam is concerned but when you come to the upsc prelims now this year you can see earlier they used to give four statements i think this year they have given even six statements also and even many people are saying that paper two is tougher than the paper one already paper one is tough and again paper two is tougher than the paper one so it is how uh, the upsc people will go on change their uh, strategy okay yes so Posidonia australis, world's largest plant. Just remember why it is in news because it is the world's largest plant. <coughs> Scientists have discovered the world's largest plant of the Australia coast, a seagrass meadow that has grown by repeatedly cloning itself. Cloning itself, a single, from single plant, so many plants have evolved. The single plant of Posidonia australis was discovered in the shallow waters of the World Heritage Area of Shark Bay in Western Australia. See, see now they may not ask that plant, they may ask uh, a question, I mean, related to this Shark Bay in Western Australia. Two or three questions in the prelims appeared in this manner. <clears throat> now, genetic analysis has, has revealed that the underwater fields of waving green seagrass are a single organism from one plant covering 70 square miles, 70 square miles, 180 square kilometers through making copies of itself over 4,500 years. Scientists confirmed that the widow was a single organism by sampling and comparing the dna of seagrass shoots across the bed so from single plant they evolved i mean large number of plants okay with same dna means it should be considered as a single plant 
the scientists call the meadow of the Poseidon's ribbon weed the most widespread known clone on earth covering an area larger than Washington. Though the seagrass meadow is immense, it's vulnerable. A decade ago, the, the seagrass covered an additional 7 square miles. But cyclones and rising ocean temperatures linked to climate change have recently killed almost a tenth of the ancient seagrass bed. Seagrass bed. Yeah, see now, because of rising ocean temperature, not only the fauna, even flora is also subjected to harm. If the temperature of ocean increases by 1 degree, it is said that hundreds of species will become extinct. So, we are having threat to the large number of species that is threat to the biodiversity if temperature goes on increasing. Now, even in cities also nowadays, the temperature is going on increasing. The main reason is because of the vehicular pollution. Vehicular pollution. And uh, again, the second reason is, in many cities, the roads are black topped. Black topped. They will uh, absorb more heat energy. You see, if you move on the road in the, uh, I mean, often on your bike, in the car means, uh, I mean, you will not pursue that. On the bike, you can see how the heat waves will come from the roads. Even in the evening hours also, after the sunset also, that heat will be uh, pursued. So, the government uh, should uh, consider this thing into account and they have to change the black topic. They have to go for, uh, I mean, some other thing. Okay? Yes. Now, <clears throat> 7th June, just now I told you, every day you will have one or other day. So, remember 7th June. Why? Because food is very important. Everything will stop, but your stomach will not stop. At 8.30 or 8.45, all our students will start seeing the watches or their cell phones. Especially few people who are most concerned about their stomach rather than mind. 7th June, World Food Safety Day. See, why, why we should give importance for the food? Because, you know, food, high medicine. Food is the medicine. It is the ancient saying. Suppose if you consume the contaminated food, what happens? You will be diseased. You will be subjected to a disease. So nowadays, what is happening? Are we consuming the safe food? Not perfect. Even last class, we have discussed about the biofortification. What was the aim of biofortification? To see that we will consume the necessary nutrients and also the balanced diet. Last class we have discussed 15 days ago. Of course, last week, uh, so there was no class uh, uh, because of UPSC prelims. So the aim of biofortification was to see that the person will get the balanced diet or required, I mean, nutrients. See, nowadays what is happening because of high usage of chemicals, for food, I mean, for uh, this food production, it is having many chemical residues. I told you, I mean, time and again, three, three or four years ago, there was problem in the Elur. So many people were acting in a different manner, and even they faced some sort of uh, disease. And uh, when authorities uh, uh, made an uh, inquiry and also research, they finally concluded that, that the abnormal chemical residues in the vegetables. And also in the milk is the main concern for the um, acts or what they did. So even in the agriculture sector, because high usage of chemicals automatically, uh, they are getting contaminated or they are having high chemical residues. Even when you cook the rice in the open bowls, you can pursue the smell, the chemical smell. Okay. Now, Again, nowadays, what is happening? See, our, our standard of living has increased. Wife is working, husband is working. Nobody is there to cook in the house. Of course, they may cook to some extent. 50% they will cook. 
and the remaining 50 percent they will use the packed food or even so nowadays they are called as the convenience food packed foods see that packed food will have lot of preservatives which are harmful to the body you know the packed foods even they contain more percentage of salt the reason is salt itself is a preservative okay yeah so the i mean usage of junk foods has increased like anything because why they are convenient foods now even in uh, some pickles also they use some sort of chemicals so which are harmful so food safety is very important honoring that or or recognizing the importance of that food uh, food we are celebrating or we are observing 7 june as the world food safety day world food safety day is an annual celebration to draw attention and inspire action to help prevent detect and manage food borne risk what are food borne risk you will have the food borne disease and there are many days see if you eat the see now and um, i mean time and again you can see in the paper so because of food poisoning 30 people were uh, hospitalized in the hostel or in the marriage hall or in the hotel. The World Health Organization announced the theme of the World Food Safety Day 2022 as safer food, better health. There is no doubt in it. So such kind of uh, themes they may ask in the state services and also any sort of competitive examination. <coughs> A safer food, better health is the theme. Need for food safety. See, if you are not consuming the safe food, you cannot work. You will not produce what you can. You will be hospitalized. And double the maka, you have to pay lakhs of rupees to the hospital. Need for food safety. Food safety is a major, major determinant of health. It affects the survival well-being, livelihood and productivity of individuals and eventually societies. See now what happens when uh, India faced the COVID-19. Our production has decreased like anything. Even if you are not feeling well, will you come to the class? You will not come to the class. Even you may skip the exam also, who knows? This time I could not prepare well. So because of ill health condition, I will write next year. Because there is counting of attempt in the UPSC. Foodborne disease represents a considerable public health burden and challenge. Overuse of antimicrobials in veterinary and human medicine. See, I told you, I mean, several times in our routine classes, vultures are becoming extinct. You know, vultures, who are sometimes called as the decomposers. So, vultures, which prey on the dead animals, I mean, mostly. They are subjected to death because of high usage of diclofenac, diclofenac by the veterinary doctors. It is a painkiller. Even we people are also consume the, I mean, diclofenac. It is a painkiller along with the acyclofenac. If you are having headache, then you will consume diclofenac. If you got any sort of injury, then you will go to the painkiller that is the diclofenac. Yeah. <clears throat> Has led to antimicrobial resistance which has now become one of the main threats to modern medicine. Going beyond the conventional definition of food safety, unsafe food also means food that can harm through unhealthy fats. Yes, unhealthy fats. Fat, see, there are many fats in There are various types of fats. Some fats are good for health. Some fats are harmful. Okay, unhealthy fats. Even you can see on the labels of uh, the food, uh, processed food packet, even on the uh, milk packet also, there is a uh, abbreviation, SNF. What is the full form of SNF, Madam Shivani? SNF. Solid, not fat. 
solid not fat so don't think that all fats are unhealthy there are many fats which are healthy high energy density and high high salt content see high energy density see there are some sort of energy drinks which you will consume especially our students also they will consume red bull energy drink they are harmful okay see again um, i mean you can say if you go to the gyms gym there you will have bottles they will sell at a high high price muscle builders muscle builders they are also harmful high energy density and high salt content salt is the deadliest uh, i mean chemical of course it is essential but beyond limit it is deadliest contributing to increased risk of non communicable disease what is non communicable disease take the example of heart attack it is a non communicable if one person uh, is uh, got attack of heart attack means all the persons in that bus or train will get that uh, stroke no it is non communicable i mean non communicable and <clears throat> street food which is commonly consumed in all parts of the country often poses a health hazard not all street foods but who knows what they are using see i will tell you one example in the on, maybe it is common thing they will use the same oil to fry n number of items and some people are saying that the oil will uh, contain some carcinogenic items the same oil they will use for frying or uh, doing something yes one yes s yes. which is commonly consumed in all parts of the country and uh, even the sauce or the things they use will have lot of chemicals you know sauce it will be made maybe 2 or 3 years ago or 1 year ago who knows highly chemicalized and your ketchup who knows they will add lot of preservatives often poses a health hazard as it is contaminated with infectious viruses and bacteria leading to various food born diseases there are many food born diseases what i mean to say is you have to remember the june 7th which is observed as the world food safety day and you know it is a routine thing what sort of things will result in the <coughs> diseases if you consume anything outside if it is prepared in a uh, unhealthy atmosphere like fly sitting on that or your friends must go sitting on that automatically they will transmit the diseases but you will not stop okay yes these high salt foods packaged foods actually they will attract the customer because you are forced to eat that like uh, of course i will not name that packets even our students will also eat uh, i mean that packets one uh, even at a time they will consume two or three packets they will contain high salt it is not good for health okay yes theek hai india bangladesh joint military exercise ex sampriti x so just you, you remember the name that is sufficient it is a joint military exercise of india and bangladesh so every month india will engage in uh, such kind of exercises with some or other country as part of the ongoing india bangladesh bilateral defense cooperation bilateral defense cooperation okay a joint military training exercises ex sampriti x is being conducted at jashor military station in bangladesh from 5th june to 16th june 2022 exercise sampriti is an important bilateral defense cooperation and you were conducted alternatively by both one year in, one year in our country other year in their country which aims to strengthen and widen the aspects of interoperability of cooperation between both the armies the aim of the exercise is to strengthen interoperability between the two armies and to understand each other's tactical drills and operational techniques the indian contingent of company strength is being represented by a battalion of the dogra regiment so if it is depth means they may ask the dogra regiment also but as far as state uh, 
सर्विस एग्जाम्स आर कंसर्न दिस संप्रति इज सफिशिएंट एक्स एक्स संप्रति एक्स एंड व्हेन यू कम टू द यूपीएससी दे विल आस्क इवन माइन्यूट टू माइन्यूट डिटेल्स एंड इवन दो यू आर हैविंग लॉट ऑफ कमांड्स इफ यू आर नॉट हैविंग ए कमांड ऑन वन स्टेटमेंट देन यू आर फोर्स्ड टू लीव दैट स्टेटमेंट एंड ऑलवेज स्टेइंग योरसेल्फ इन द बॉर्डर आर या पार ओके yes in the state service you are not having the negative mark as far as telangana state service is concerned now world first fishing cat census a cat which preys on fishes of course every cat will know to swim but cats cannot survive for a long ordinary cats cannot survive for a long period in the water that you have to remember they will die within half an hour or 20 minutes or one hour they cannot sir ordinary cats or what uh, i mean the cats way, uh, which are seen in the street or in our houses they cannot remain in water for a long period because they will be die but this cat is unique it will continuously swim and catch the fish and uh, uh, for the first time we took the census in which area we took the census of this cat anybody from online side या चिल्का लेक चिल्का लेक अंडी चिल्का लेक रोहित एंड आल्सो स्वाति एंड व्हिच इज द फर्स्ट रामसर साइट इन इंडिया व्हिच इज द फर्स्ट रामसर साइट इन इंडिया ऑनलाइन स्टूडेंट्स व्हिच इज द फर्स्ट रामसर साइट इट इज चिल्का अंडी अलोंग विद द Kio, along with the Kio, Kilo Dio, yes, 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 Bhagavati, Kilo Dio National Park in Rajasthan. So both are uh, uh, given that status for the first time. Okay, Chilka and this one. And uh, this Chilka Lake is famous for the migration of uh, which organism, Madam? Ramya, Chilka Lake is famous for the migration of which living organism? Last class we have discussed Ridley turtle. Ridley turtle. Okay. Yes. Okay. And Chilka Lake is in the border of AP and Orissa. Yes. What type of lake is Chilka Lake? Lagoon Lake. Lagoon Lake. Lagoon Lake. Okay, you know what is meant by Lagoon Lake? Formed by the backwaters of the sea or ocean is called as Lagoon Lake. Okay, yes. World's first fishing cat census. The world's first population estimation of the fishing cat outside the protected area network of Asia's largest. Brackish water lagoon was connected in Chilka. That is our Chilka Lake. This is the figure of that cat. Of course, it is like ordinary cat only. According to the census, Chilka Lake in Odisha is home to 156 fishing cats. One, sorry, 176 fish of fishing cats. So struggle for existence. That's all. There is no other way. If chicken is not available, you will go for meat. If both are not available, you will go for fish. If the three are not available, you will go for prawns. If four are not available, you will go for some other thing. Then. Crabs. If that is also available, I think you will consume crocodile. Okay. The census was conducted by Chilka Development Authority in collaboration with the Fishing Cat Project. The cat is globally threatened species found in marshland, mangroves, flooded forest, and other wetlands. the feline an adept swimmer and twice the size of a house cat has been designated as an ambassador of chilka 2020 that is also very important wherever you will see the tourism board of chilka you can see the face of that cat ambassador brand ambassador 
okay yes my dears that is about that uh, uh, concept now of course i think we have discussed this in the last class also so what is blending of ethanol so in the diesel we are blending the biodiesel that is the i mean ethanol see from where you are getting the biodiesel sugarcane and also fungiomia and jetropa even from castor and even maize so what is the benefit of blending the uh, this biodiesel or ethanol with the ordinary diesel what happens we are importing lot of diesel so automatically our import bill will get reduced and even if the import bill get reduces the rupee appreciates or depreciates madam ramya garu if import bill odile am am cover topic okay if import bill i mean reduces whether rupee will appreciate or uh, i mean depreciate shivani if import bill reduces whether rupee will appreciate or depreciate my dear online students yes swati divya bhagavati sam navyashri you are correct rupee will appreciate rohit i don't know why rohit is answering as the depreciate rupee will appreciate why the demand for dollars will reduce whenever there is demand for dollar then automatically you have to give more rupees to purchase 1 dollar more rupees to purchase 1 dollar it is depreciation now the rupee has depreciated abnormally it is nearly 77 rupees or more than 77 it is a uh, historical low if i am not wrong now yesterday there was inflation in america 40 years high after 1981 artamainda after 1981 the inflation in america is 40 years high not only in america throughout the world now uh, whole world is a single family see crude oil price has increased automatically we are pursuing the inflation also okay but it seems that the problem in the america is too grave okay yeah so when our import bill decreases automatically rupee will appreciate one thing second thing we will have our self sufficiency see whatever may be the item self sufficiency is very important now see at the time of covid 19 because of logistic problems we could not import many many products so there started i mean lot of price rise in the many commodities and even many automobile companies could not deliver their vehicles because of uh, the shortage of chips and also semiconductors etc because of logistic problems so all the time now after covid 19 every country is trying to see that they will attain self sufficiency and uh, we have used a term uh, uh, i mean for this concept what is the term we used every country wanted to become self sufficient in all items they wanted to minimize the imports we have we have we have used uh, two words what is the two words okay as far as india is concerned atmanirbhar bharat is correct but other countries also doing the same we cannot call atmanirbhar bharat for other, other countries <laughs> so in spite of uh, continuous repetition many people are unable to answer and even i am not dealing this issues in short even i am going sideways depth etc 
it is nothing but economic nationalism economic nationalism economic nationalism yes as far as india is concerned it is atmanirbhar bharat yes my dear <coughs> So now, actually, the problem in India is these plants are having a lot of gestation period. Means like Pongamia, Jetropa, they are having four or five years of gestation period to give yield. So Indian farmer, as we are having the small land holding, we are unable to stop or unable to wait for such a long period. And the second thing is the procurement is also not in a fair manner. You are not having that uh, oil extractors in all the places. They are concentrated only in few places. So if government wanted to encourage this, they have to establish more and more uh, oil extractors or they have to permit the private players. Of course, nowadays, even private players also, are, I mean, extracting that. So many industries are uh, working to extract the biodiesel from the maize maize okay yes india achieves 10 percent ethanol blending india has achieved the target of 10 percent ethanol blending in petrol five months ahead of schedule so now they are also blending with the petrol so, so diesel from time immemorial this is up from 1.5 percent in 2014 there are three clear benefits of achieving this goal first it has led to a reduction of 27 lakh tons of carbon emission. This is very must. See, just now I told you, we took every step to save the ecology. In spite of that, World Economic Forum has not uh, uh, realized that and uh, we were placed at the bottom. Second, it has saved foreign exchange worth rupees 41,000 crore. Automatically, our rupee will appreciate. That is very, very important. Thirdly, farmers of the country have earned rupees 40,600 crore in the last eight years due to increase in the ethanol blending. Means there will be huge demand. Automatically, they will get the lucrative price. So, see, I mean, your knowledge should be wide. So, then only you can achieve your goal of government job. It is not like our academic. If you read the first three chapters, you can answer the first three questions. If you read last three chapters, you can answer last three questions. Actually, you have to answer five out of ten. So, over, you will clear your examination by reading very hardly four or five hours. Even some people will not read even four or five hours also. As far as academic is concerned. But in the government jobs, even if you lose 0.25 marks also, you may lose the job. Okay? Yes. TK. Ethanol blended petrol program. The center promotes the ethanol blended petrol program with the aim of enhancing energy security. Why? We are not self-reliant in the energy. We are importing crude oil. Now, the worst heat country because of Russia-Ukraine war is the India. Crude oil price has increased from $75 to almost all $120, $130. I think today, or, uh, I think today it is... Uh, Maybe 120 odd. Leather? Yes, 120 odd. And. Yeah. Energy security. Reducing import dependency, that is self reliant on fuel. Saving foreign exchange. Addressing environmental issues and giving a boost to agriculture. Triple, four times, five times the maka. And giving boost to agriculture is a must because it is a sector which is providing employment to almost all. 50% of workforce in India. And our farmers are not getting good price. So automatically, if they will get good price, they will create a lot of economy. So these points you have to remember whenever you are writing the main. Because that concept is uh, common for any, any examination of main. Like UPSC or state services like group 1 mains. So you are getting a lot of benefit. One is energy security. Import dependency, 
saving foreign exchange, addressing environmental issues because less carbon emissions and uh, giving a boost to agriculture. The national policy on biofuels notified by the government in 2018 envisaged an indicative target of 20% ethanol blending in petrol by 2030. You may achieve, but by that time, by that time, the dependency on petrol may also reduce. Why? Our dependency on the fuel, this kind of fuel will reduce. Why? Why we, why we does not require this fuel in course of time? Why? Why in course of time our dependency on crude oil will decrease? Nobody? Yes, we are using the renewable resources, solar energy. Again, take the example of vehicles. Instead of crude oil, you will go for the electric vehicle. Even I am planning to purchase the Baja Chetak electric vehicle. But now it is not easily available in the market. Okay? Yeah, even non-conventional. Now we are encouraging the non-conventional energy resources. Solar energy, wind energy, geothermal, tidal, wind. Okay? So necessity is the mother of invention. Now we are forced to use the e-bikes. And they are available and uh, easy. Less maintenance than our diesel and petrol vehicles. Only battery, motor, that's all. Of course, Many people are saying that uh, fire uh, they are subjected to fire accidents and even in our science and technology class also sir dealt with that topic. Okay? Yes. No issue. Given the encouraging performance and various interventions made by the government since 2014, the 20% target was advanced to 25-26. Now. Yeah. Now. Take the example of non-conventional solar power, wind power, geothermal, energy from solid waste, energy from the agricultural waste. All these come under the non-conventional. So earlier, maybe six or seven years ago, ten years ago, wind power was in the limelight. Solar followed the wind energy. But nowadays what happened? Solar power is in the first seat, whereas wind power is in the second seat. The reason is the solar photovoltaic cells have become cheaper. And you know how solar power is tapped. So, sun rays will fall on the uh, photovoltaic cells and they will get charged automatically. They will supply that electron, I mean, I mean movement to the battery or sometimes it is directly connected to the grid. So, compared to wind, the solar power is cheap. There is no doubt in it. And even if, if you install one solar power and uh, its life, the I mean, life of uh, solar photovoltaic cells is more than 25 years. Okay. Now, even for a house also, you can have the solar power. Even for a house, you can install a small solar power plant at a cost of less than 80,000 rupees and it is sufficient to meet your needs. Even a big house also. The only thing is, you cannot run the air conditioners and geyser. Even you can run the, I mean, refrigerator also. Because I am using that. Okay? That is with regard to the solar power. So now, see actually, even government wanted to encourage the wind power also. Because government is has not left any stone to harness the non-conventional resources. Because sometimes, Solar power may become costly. Who knows? If there is shortage of silicon, then automatically, the uh, 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 I mean, silicon is widely used in the manufacture of the photovoltaic cells. Automatically, its price will increase. Now, you know what happened steel? Steel is fluctuating like anything. It went to 90,000 per ton, again 60. So, what happens? Only God knows. Highly volatile. So, go so government of India is also encouraging the wind power, especially in the Offshore. What is the meaning of offshore, Madam Srija? Offshore.
ऑफशोर एनीबडी फ्रॉम ऑनलाइन साइट ऑफशोर सो यू पीपल आर नॉट पार्टिसिपेटिंग इन द क्लास on the surface of the sea or ocean on the surface of ocean or sea that is offshore what is onshore on the land mass why government is encouraging on the offshore because there will not be any obstructions no obstructions but not possible in the mid of the ocean because it requires some base to install the wind vane or that total structure to which that uh, wind vane is attached it cannot float on the water so but near to the coast you can install that and you know denmark is pioneer in the wind energy denmark of course germany denmark netherlands netherlands denmark germany these people are pioneers in the wind energy and even we are also having good rank as far as wind energy is concerned but when you come to the solar india is tropical country irrespective of season you will receive the sun rays even in the winter season also you will receive the sun rays which is sufficient to generate the power when you come to the wind unlike solar it is not continuous it it, it totally depends on the wind sometimes the wind may stop the power generation will also stop okay so this question even as energy resources is part and parcel of every main syllabus so you should be able to answer the question even they ask i mean about the wind for the main sample only god knows what sort of questions will come in the examination take the example of tspsc main syllabus beyond upsc beyond upsc yes there is no doubt in it take the example of snt syllabus environment syllabus in the mains it is beyond upsc even indian geography also indian geography telangana geography beyond upsc one third of geography option they have put in that okay yes no issue the ministry of power and the ministry of new and renewable energy engaged in a discussion on the transmission planning for offshore wind energy projects in india what is offshore wind energy it refers to the clean and renewable energy obtained by taking advantage of the force of the wind that is produced on the high seas whenever you get the question in the mains you have to define that what is wind energy of course the examiner know what is wind energy but it is your ever duty to answer in the exam the wind reaches a higher speed with consistency near the seas than on the land where it faces barriers see on the land you will have a lot of barriers trees high rise buildings hills whereas in the ocean it will be clear wind energy projects are seated on the sea bed and are equipped with technical innovation there are more wind resources offshore than the onshore there is no doubt in it no obstruction offshore wind farms can be installed in shallow water just now i told you why shallow waters the base will be on the <coughs> seabed only it cannot be erected on the water it cannot float on water definitely it should have the solid base so i mean near the coast only they have to be installed but at a far distance from the coast <coughs> offshore wind farms can be installed in shallow waters about 60 meters deep away from the coast marine traffic routes strategic naval installations why it should not obstruct the activities of other sectors like naval installations traffic routes that is movement of domestic ships or international ships or zones of ecological interest and even you should not harm the biodiversity automatically you have to move into the ocean <coughs> see how how offshore floating wind farms work so this is how they are uh, erected and uh, here you are having the power station these few are floating but even you can also erect on the base far away from the 
post and where you will not have any sort of obstruction. Huge floating wind turbines, each about 600 feet tall, are grouped together and anchored to the ocean floor. Though they are floating, this point is very important. They are anchored. If they are not anchored, means our wind farms will go to the Australia and they will make use of that. You have to remember, you cannot anchor in the mid of the sea. Why? You cannot reach the dip and it will. It, it is not cost effective. Definitely, they should be very near to the coast. It is the reason why they have mentioned about the 60 meters where you will have the bed available at a shallow depth. Are you able to follow this concept? You cannot erect this in the mid of the ocean. And anchoring is very important. If you will not anchor means your wind farms will go to the I mean, neighboring countries. And then, through electric cable, they will have the tapping of that power and they will supply accordingly. See, <coughs> huge floating wind turbines, each uh, about 600 feet tall, are grouped together and anchored to the ocean floor. Electricity from the turbines is transmitted to a floating substation. Of course, it is also anchored and uh, to the power station. And the electricity then flows through a buried cable to an onshore power plant. So these are all uh, sources, Bay Area News Group Research and uh, image source, bookpandi.com. I told you, whenever you are, uh, I mean, whenever you are using an image, you have to reveal the source. If not, uh, it will attract the infringement of the trademark or infringement of the intellectual property. Okay? Yes. <coughs> Now, list of largest wind power plants in India. See, two of our plants are in the list of world's 10 big largest plants. That is greatness of India. Out of 10 largest plants in the world, two belongs to India. Okay. Now, list of largest wind power plants in India. Muppandal Wind Farm. The project was developed by Tamil Nadu Energy Development Agency. The Muppandal wind farm is India's largest operational onshore wind farm. See, they may give the match following, I mean match the following. Wind energy, tidal energy, geothermal energy, and the place one side, and the type of, uh, uh, I mean, this energy on this, uh, I mean, this other zone. You see, you are having the Tatapani. Tatapani is having which type of, uh, I mean, uh, energy? Ever matter to continue? Phone be nakko baat karo. Nuclear. Tatapani is tapping which type of uh, energy? Tatapani. Tatapani. My dear online students. Tatapani is tapping which type of energy? My dear online students. So, Tatapani is more prominent for Geothermal. Tatapani is more prominent for the geothermal. Hot spring is used to generate the power, hot water. We have discussed in our, I mean, routine classes like Tatapani and also Marikaran. And uh, again, nowadays in the Leh area or I mean, just Ladakh area also, we are planning one geothermal energy. We have discussed in the energy resources topic of our Indian geography, at least our old students like Himabindu. Okay, of course, don't worry, new students will also get all the subjects and in cyclic process, you will get, don't ask me within one day, you want everything, not possible. Even within one month also, not possible. It will take nearly six or seven months to complete one cycle happily. Yes, my dears. Now, the Muppandal wind farm is India's largest operational onshore wind farm. Very nice fact, and Onshore means on the land. Jaisalmer wind, wind Park. See, Jaisalmer is a city where almost all you will record even highest temperature also, one of the highest temperature. In India, highest temperature is recorded at Jaisalmer only. Okay? This project is located in Jaisalmer district, Rajasthan, Western India. The project was initiated in August 2001. This wind park was developed by Suzlon Energy. They were pioneers, and when the and when the wind power was taking the front seats, their share value was excellent. 
now the share value i think now it is out of the share market if i am not wrong even i had that shares at higher price and uh, i lost everything in that share so all depends on luck because i thought that wind power will be in the front seat automatically it came to the back seat i came to the third seat because of the collapse in the stock price sometimes happens okay yes the jaisalmer wind park is india's second largest operational onshore wind farm now and wangsuwade wind park it is located at a distance of 40 km from the town of satara satara district in maharashtra wangsuwade wind park is a wind farm located on a high mountain plateau at 1150 meters above the koina reservoir once again old question for you koina is a tributary of which river madam sirisha madam sirisha madam madam shivani krishna because we are discussing that concept uh, time and again koina is a tributary of krishna and even we have discussed in the disaster management because of a reservoir constructed on the koina river it has resulted in the earthquake reservoir induced earthquake we have discussed in the disaster management also okay yes my dears now <coughs> wind power potential in india the union government has set an ambitious target of achieving 175 gigawatt of installed capacity see actually what is the what is it 175 gigawatt what is 150 150 gigawatt it is not storage it is instantaneous uh, i'm production of that uh, uh, i'm that much of energy it is instantaneous it is not any volume it is instantaneous generation of power instantaneous okay so you people are unable to sit on the chairs for even even 45 minutes and one hour also and that too very comfortable chairs because because of your bad posture of sitting especially our anjum okay and theek hai no issue 175 gigawatt of installed capacity from renewable energy sources by 2020 which includes 100 gigawatt of solar and 60 gigawatt of wind power we are having a lot of potential of solar power because india is a tropical country irrespective of season we will have the solar installation the total renewable power installed capacity in the country stood at about 70 gigawatt in the financial year 1718 now it is far more it is found by the national institute for wind energy that western states have larger potential in terms of stable steady and speedy wind flow starting from gujarat maharashtra karnataka to tamil nadu and andhra pradesh top states in india installed wind, I mean, wind power capacity you have to remember tamil nadu first tamil nadu tops the list i mean such kind of facts you have to remember for the state services tamil nadu <coughs> tops the list of states with the largest installed wind power generation capacity in the country share of wind power in in electricity generation was around 28% in 2018 total wind capacity at the end of 2018 stood at 8631 don't try to remember this uh, kind of stats and the second is the gujarat and maharashtra third karnataka fourth of course this uh, rank also changes time and again now but you have remember the first and second uh, uh, top uh, top plants in the wind power now policies related to wind energy in india initially the government had the national wind power policy but six, but subsequently both the onshore and offshore wind policies were developed for offshore wind energy india has a very vibrant policy that came up in october 2015 known as the national offshore wind energy policy framework the objective is to develop offshore wind energy in the indian exclusive economic zone what is the exclusive economic zone it runs up to 200 nautical miles on the surface of the ocean so up to that point you will be having the exclusive right to tap the resources of the ocean it might be wind or minerals or whatever maybe even marine resources like the fish etc e is that exclusive economic zone 
runs up to 1200 nautical miles 200 sorry sorry 200 nautical miles 200 extremely sorry okay yes 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 now a solar wind hybrid policy was issued in may 2018 the main objective of the policy is to provide a framework for the promotion of large grid connected wind solar photovoltaic so a grid which will get the supply from both wind and solar so automatically take the example of night time night time you will not have the solar insulation but wind will not sleep even night time they will blow at a <laughs> i mean higher rate of velocity automatically the grid will not be subjected to any disruption in the power are you able to follow so that is the aim of the grid of large grid connected wind solar photovoltaic hybrid system for optimal and efficient utilization of wind and solar resources so solar resources transmission infrastructure and land the wind solar pv hybrid system pv means photovoltaic hybrid systems will help in reducing the variability and renewable power generation just now i told you what is variability morning solar night wind and and uh, achieving better grid stability what is the meaning of achieving better grid stability continuously the grid will supply the power so these sort of practical things we have to understand that's all you can write the main sense without common sense and common knowledge even you will not be able to understand the question also if you sleep in the class okay if you sleep in the class automatically you will also sleep in the examination hall because you don't know anything you will have ample of time if you know everything the time will not be sufficient that is the problem if you don't know anything everything is zero you can sleep in the exam hall also if you know everything you will struggle to answer the question advantages of wind park or wind farm renewable that is common for solar also meaning that the source of energy is not depleted when it is used so as we use wind energy we don't decrease the amount of wind available whereas in the case of fossil fuel it leads to depletion of resources if you are using the coal 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 is getting depleted but whereas wind no question of depletion even just the, you will take the moment and the wind will move to some other place we are not consuming it is a non consumptive use low cost energy but compared to solar now it is not low cost earlier it was low cost the energy they produce is cheap okay although the wind turbines have high upfront cost the energy they produce is cheap clean energy generating energy using wind turbine does not emit any greenhouse gases so actually the system is in such a manner that you will have a dynamo fixed to the uh, long structure say maybe 200 feet or 300 feet above you can see um, uh, they will be at a higher height uh, why because at ground level the wind velocity will be low because of the friction uh, i mean uh, i mean because of friction of the ground see you can see the high rise building you will have the good uh, uh, wind flow so here what happens they will be erected at a higher elevation and this is a dynamo and for this dynamo you will fix a wind vane even if this wind vane moves slowly also this dynamo with the help of the gear system will generate ample energy here rotational energy is converted into the electric energy okay there is no need to i mean i mean don't think that it it has rotated at a higher velocity no need simple simple rotation will also generate lot of energy if this fan rotates one time the dynamo rotates n number of time because there will be a gear system and these mechanical engineers know more about the gear system and the the same system we will use in our vehicles also first gear second gear third gear etc okay now disadvantages of wind park or wind farm onshore wind is an intermittent source of energy as turbines cannot generate electricity on demand but only when the wind is blowing and at sufficient strength so it is not continuous like solar power why solar power will start at 6 o'clock 
as soon as sun, I mean sun, uh, sunrise starts. By evening six hours, so they will work, I mean without any interruption. But this is the problem with the wind. So if they ask about the comparison between solar and wind, you can write this good point. When wind strength is insufficient for turbines to operate, the fossil fuel based power supply is needed as a backup, which can temporarily increase the greenhouse gas emission. Whereas in the case of solar power, it is not the case. As per some research, people who live or work in close proximity have experienced symptoms that include decreased quality of life, annoyance, stress, sleep disturbance, headache, anxiety, depression, and cognitive dysfunction. However, many researchers have differing opinions. So, some people are saying that they are having some sort of health issues with regard to this wind uh, power plants. But it may be true or not because there is no proven um, uh, research to say that yes, these wind winds are causing harm to the nearby people. I think it is it will not cause any great effect. Though these cell towers are causing lot of health problems, they are erected in the people living areas only, highly densely populated areas because of the necessity. You may live without food, you may live without water for a day, but you cannot live even 10 seconds without your cell phone, especially few of our students. Ear, ear is connected to the phone, phone is connected to the ear. Okay, my dears. Wind turbine syndrome and wind farm syndrome are terms for the alleged adverse human health effects related to the proximity of wind turbines. Wind turbine syndrome has been characterized as pseudoscience. Wind parks need to be spread over more land than other power stations. Yes, they require more land and need to be built in wild and rural areas which can lead to industrialization of the countryside causing harm to the rural economy. Even solar, solar cells also require a lot of area, photovoltaic cells. Now government is planning to erect the photovoltaic cells on the canals, on the roads. If you erect that solar photovoltaic cells on the canals, even you can stop the evaporation loss of the water. That is a good idea. But it may harm the other living organisms because lack of photosynthesis, the, the grass may die. If grass dies, the, uh, the, uh, I mean the organisms which feed on grass will also die. That is the other effect. Okay. Now, problems in wind energy sector. For the past three years, there has been a lull in the wind power sector. I told you the reason is solar power, erection of solar photovoltaic cells is cheaper when compared to the wind. In 2016-17, India added around... 5.5 gigawatt, it came down to 2 gigawatt. Initially, the growth in the wind energy sector picked up because of the incentives in generation, accelerated depreciation and taxation. The government has gradually taken these initiatives away. So earlier they gave lot of incentives like tax perks, which is called as the economic stimulus. Now they have taken back all these. Now they are giving for the solar plants. Even a farmer can erect his uh, plan to draw the water from the tube well. But now the problem is we are not getting subsidy from the government. So again, it has also taken back seat as far as farm solar power unit is concerned. Because even I am also trying for that. But nobody is uh, installing that, saying that no, sir, we are not getting the subsidy from the government. Because of various reasons. Now, the lowest bidding price in solar energy is rupees 2.23 per unit, whereas in the wind energy it is about 4.50. What is the meaning? If you sell the wind, if you sell the power generated by wind less than 450, you will suffer losses. But whereas solar, I mean solar power generators are bidding at 2.2, I mean 2.3, and who will purchase the, the, uh, the uh, I mean the wind power at 4.5, the same electricity automatically. It is reason why the wind power has taken the back seat. Even now, because of the government policy, big industrialists can purchase the power from the private power producers. 
so why they will go for 4.50 they will go for 2.23 it is the major drawback for the uh, i mean future of the wind wind energy investors find investment in the solar energy sector more lucrative policies related to wind energy being still in the transition phase actually the main reason for the back seat of the wind energy is the cheap erection cost of the solar energy that is the main point the government of india came with the framework with respect to auctioning in december 2017 there is a ceiling of tariff Im imposed on every auction winds being region specific achieving the particular tariff rate become difficult region specific where you will get the winds you can erect whereas solar power is not so not region specific because throughout india there will be sunlight general challenges with respect to distribution companies for instance curtailment in power generation delayed payments to energy produce. actually now i will tell you what is the meaning of discom so distribution companies now take the example of telangana or andhra pradesh many states these discoms are suffering huge loss what is the reason the reason is the government is supplying free power to the farmers the government has to reimburse that amount to these discoms but they are not doing in a timely manner now from where the from where these discoms are buying the power from the private players and the discoms are not paying the bill to the uh, bill to these people then how how they can run if you will not pay the uh, fees to the institution how the institution will run nothing of that kind so that is the problem with the discoms and who are responsible for the bad condition of discoms that is the governments the respective state governments are responsible because they are involving in the populistic policies like free power and even they are also giving free power to some uh, some small houses or uh, in, the, in the villages etc okay and even government is unable to pay the power bills which they consume for the government offices maybe last year or two years ago on one fine day uh, the power department has uh, cut the power supply to the sub register office in tandur on that day they could not do anything because all the computers were non uh, became non operational afterwards they paid the bill and they got the connection that is what happening and you know of course i had seen in the paper that uh, telangana government owes crores of rupees to the discom yes now list of world's 10 largest wind power plants so we are to belong to india that is great and wind power plant megawatt location gansu 7965 china alta united states of america muppandal wind farm tamil nadu and jaisalmer wind farm rajasthan these two are in the list of the 10 top wind power generating plants of the world very nice achievement of india okay yes yes my dear so next session i will start at uh, 10 o'clock 10 or 10:05 amrachar sir is not available i will take uh, even the next session also okay meet at 10 o'clock for next session thank you